Welcome to the Everyday Preparedness Podcast. We're back for yet another episode. I'm Zan, and Brent's with us again today. Uh, Brent, what's new in the world of preparedness for you? Oh, honestly, not a whole lot, really. Just getting everything ready for, uh, you know, the winter and cold weather stuff. I always change out my get-home bag and stuff like that. But other than that, not a whole lot, honestly. Yeah, that's kind of been the same for me. I've uh, put a couple of extra coats and blankets. Stocking up on the ice melt in my car that for the windshields and stuff, which that just segues right into our show today. We're going to talk about cold weather. It's for, for many parts of the country, it's already hit. So sorry if we're late on the party, but uh, for most people, you know, we're we're just now getting into the first part of winter, and we've got about three months of extremely cold weather headed our way. So, um, you know, I think people walk out the door and you know they'll throw a coat on. But there's a lot more to that than you know. You don't just have to stay warm. You've got to stay warm. You have to be comfortable. And if you get in a situation where you're stuck somewhere and it's freezing, you need to be able to not panic. And there's some certain things you can keep with you So help from that. Um, just, all right, Brent, uh, overall on cold weather, what do you have to say about that? Well, like you said, you got to stay warm. you got to be able to stay comfortable, um, not panic, stuff like that. I know a big one, like for my wife, who whenever we got married, she never – really thought about any of this stuff. One big one was boots and a really good pair of warm socks. Yeah, wool socks. Yeah, and especially if you've got boots, because I don't care what you know anybody says. If you're wearing boots for any length of time, you need a good pair of socks to go with it to save your feet. And if you get wool, you're nice and toasty. And I know you get the uh, insulated boots, uh, I think the ones I keep in my truck are actually like the thousand gram uh, of Thinsulate. Mm-hmm. I love them; they're great. They're nice and toasty. Uh, I just got a good pair of wool socks. I think I bought them at Walmart. I don't think they were that high. No, uh, no. The, the, I also bought some. It was like a three pack at Walmart, and they I stayed very warm with them. And I mean, honestly, for most winters, at least where we're at, like you know, and everything, you don't need the thousand gram Thinsulate boots. A really good pair of wool socks, and you're pretty much good to go. I like the boots for extra protection. I don't care. My feet can be too hot. Because if I'm out in the elements and stuff, I don't care to be too hot. Um, Some people have a problem with that. I personally don't. Well, Um, I I don't have a problem with it if there's two feet of snow. I mean, come on. (laughs) That's just something that people are going to underestimate. Right. Um, So we'll segue right into that. Uh, So we'll just start talking about some stuff. Uh, You know... We're going to basically break this down into two categories. Your stuff you should have in your vehicle and be prepared if you got stranded, stuck, or just in general. And then stuff you have at home if you're shut in with an ice storm or recently what we saw in upstate New York where there was like two feet of snow busting through people's doors and windows. That was ridiculous. I, I know. I saw pictures of doors just completely knocked over with snow. So. Oh, man. We'll start off with vehicles. Um, something, and this is. Some of this stuff is just basic stuff that you should have in there anyway, regardless of the weather. But uh, we can just go back and forth with ideas here. Um, first thing is clothing, extra clothing. Even if you don't have a, you know, I'm sure you're going to have a coat, but if you don't want to have, like, cover on it, you can just throw in some extra extra pair of jeans, extra wool socks to go over your regular socks, extra pair of boots, or, you know, I just wear tennis shoes most of the time. So having an extra pair of boots would, you know, help if you don't want to walk in your tennis shoes. Um, and then gloves. Uh, real, that's one thing. My hands get colder than anything if I'm out shoveling the snow, scraping the ice off. You've got to have a, a really top-of-the-line pair of gloves. I still uh, – Mechanics brand. I still love the Mechanics brand over just about anything. They're, they're relatively affordable, and they have so many different kinds of different needs. So that's just something right off the top of my head. What can you think of? Uh, well, I keep Carhartt stuff in mine. Honestly, I mean, I've got, you know, the big, like, Arctic weight overalls and jacket and mm-hmm. coat and everything. But it's something for your ears, like a sock cap, uh, anything like that. Earmuffs or, you know, whatever your preferred style is. Um, but something to keep your head warm. And something for, like, more little different reasons, uh, like a shovel. Like you said, you know, when you're shoveling uh, with the gloves. But sometimes you get stuck, and, I mean, you know, you may not need, to, you know, anything big. But just having a shovel for 10 or 15 minutes can get you out of a lot of stuff for most of the winter around here anyway. So, um, And you can buy like a good small shovel if you don't want one of the folding ones or whatever. 
uh, you can go to Lowe's and or any of your other big box stores and just get a small shovel. Uh, yeah. You know, throw it behind the seat or whatever. That's why I keep that SOG trench tool. In fact, that's the only reason I keep it is to dig snow out from around my tires or, you know, if I, if I need to break some ice off that's on the ground somewhere, I'm obviously not going to hit my car with it. But yeah. Uh, basic tools, you know, that's that's a tool. Um, uh, I also think ice melt and an ice scraper is kind of, I guess, elementary as that sounds. Whenever there's an ice storm, those are the first two things to go at any convenience store, Walmart, department store, whatever, is ice melt. And, I mean, I keep probably two cans of ice melt through my car all year long. So if you've got it when it happens, you don't have to worry about going to the store to pick it up while everybody else is running for it. Hot hands. That's another thing you can keep in there. You know, if you get stuck or even if, you know, some people aren't going to have gloves for whatever reason. And hot hands would be a good thing. Uh, and then a way to start a fire. That sounds, might sound crazy. You might think we're going Mad Max here. But again, if you're stranded and you've got nobody to help you for a while, it might be best to get out and start a fire. Um, what else you got? Uh, I was saying a little bit more you know, kind of everyday practicality, because I kind of dealt with this the other day when we had a little bit of freezing rain here. Just like a piece of cardboard or something to put over your windshield if you're at work. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, they've actually got some, uh, I bought one last year, it was like $7. It's a, uh, I don't know what, that, it's kind of like a nylon material. Right. And it's got these two bungees, and you put it over your windshield, and then you wrap the bungees, and they attach on the inside of your car, but you can still shut the doors completely with it nice. and when it when it ices on there you just pull that thing off and throw it in your trunk throw it in the back of your truck whatever it's great so uh, up until then i use cardboard for exactly what you said but go ahead yeah i was gonna say cardboard's cheap and you know you can usually you know just go to walmart and ask be like hey can i get this box you know if you're getting when they're stocking stuff and they're worthy usually more than well happy to get rid of the stuff that's true i'm trying to think i don't know uh, like you said, starting a fire and everything, um, you could even look at something where if you had to, you could get something where you can melt water, have something in there where, you know, you could pack some snow. That's a good point. I didn't think about that. Uh, I mean, that's getting a little bit more, you know, if you're going on a long journey and it's supposed to get, you know, a bad weather and everything, you might start looking at stuff like that. So, because you got to, you know, got to have something to drink. So. Yeah, and that's the next on my list, actually, is uh, is I got three things next. Um, Blankets, obviously, it's we might have an extra coat, but extra blankets in the car. Yeah. I always keep them in my car, especially because my dogs are in the back seat a lot. Right. But if you know, it's gonna double as warmth if you need it. Yep. Or if you shoot, if you needed to lay under your car to you know work on it for some reason, you could lay on the blanket. Um, car chargers for your phones or a backup battery. You might not have any way to do anything, and the only thing you could do is call for help. Well, what do you, you know, so many people run around texting on their phones nonstop. They run their batteries down, and if you don't have a way to charge it, you can't make a call. And yep. then lastly, what you just brought up, food and water. Um, that's, again, that's something that we've talked about before that should just be in your car all the time anyway, and it's stuff as basic as keeping a six-pack case of water, bottled water and a box of Cliff Bars or granola bars or you know, anything that's not going to go bad, and you can keep it in your car for months. So uh, I'll let you finish off the vehicle topic. Uh, honestly, I think we've covered as far as, like, the most part, just have extra, you know, clothing, extra coats, and you need that for whoever or whatever you're taking with you. I know, like you said, you take your dogs with you. You know, in the winter, you got to watch out for them, too. They're going to need food, water. They're going to need to be warm. I mean, most dogs can withstand it better than humans, but still, you know, you got to have a thought for them uh, but if you got kids or anything you gotta think you gotta have stuff for all them too yeah and one thing to keep in mind too if, if, if you're listening and you think oh they're forgetting this and it's super obvious well it may be obvious to you because you're in a certain area but I think like us you know somebody that's living in Florida or California is obviously not going to have the same issues with cold weather that we might have as far as like snow and ice you know it might get cold but they won't have the accumulation so with that, we'll move into home, and uh, we both can vouch for this because we've both been in several ice storms. You know, you think that you're in your house, you're out of the elements. Well, the elements can get pretty bad. It can knock out the power. Uh, it can knock tree limbs down and knock them into your house, knock windows out. Um, like we said at the start of the show, the snow in uh, upstate New York a couple weeks ago, just overpowering it. You know, it was up to people's roofs and coming into the house, so... 
Uh, I'll let you start out with whatever you can think of that you would necessity need at your home for winter weather. So the, the first big obvious one is just some backup food and water for, I would say, a bare minimum of a week. Which you should have that anyway, but... Right, I'm, you know, just being the, obvious the reason, here. The reason you want to do that is, come on, I mean, we've all we've all seen the mad dashes and fist fights yeah. over the bread and water at the supermarket, so sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, you're fine. Uh, I'd actually heard a stat a long time ago, and forgive me if this is wrong now, but what I had heard was every, like, your grocery store, supermarkets, and stuff like that, for a town, you're basically three meals from starvation. Like, there's only enough food in there for roughly three meals per person in the in any given area. That's really amazing when you stop and think about it. Cause, I mean, well, yeah, I mean, you look at how much food there is and everything, but, you know, and I know both of us have worked retail, and, you know, a lot of people don't think if they haven't been in that environment of how much you're actually stocking and keeping stuff up and the trucks that are coming in every single day delivering everything. Well, you get an ice storm that shuts down the roads, that shuts out power. Uh, you know, food goes quick. You know, like you said, you get the fist fights at the grocery store, at the gas station, everywhere else. If you have... A uh, week's worth, two weeks, I mean, is, as much as possible is great. But if you've got that, you don't have to put yourself in that environment. You don't have to try to get out on roads that may be dangerous, and you could sit at home with it. Uh, but that leads to another problem is how do you always prepare this food? Uh, we just switched over at my house over into propane, and I have a way now to heat my home and to cook meals without electricity. And to me, I think that's fantastic whenever you get a chance to lose power. So Yeah, one thing, the first thing people th they'll say is backup generator. Well, not all of us can afford it, and not, not all houses are wired for it. Uh, there's, a, there's other things that go into that, plus you're using a lot of gasoline or different types of fuel, which then you have to go get if you're going to store it. I mean, we could, you know, it just kind of snowballs, no pun intended, from there. Well, no, and, you know, backup generators are great, but like you said, you that's something else you've got to prepare for because you've got to have backup fuel. And, you know, you've, it's something else you've got to maintain. You know, those things don't keep themselves if you're not checking the oil and stuff like that on them. You know, they're great to have. If you can afford it, God bless you, you know. Well, I can uh, give you an example of that as I know somebody that uh, had a backup generator. Actually, I know several people that's had it. And they uh, had everything ready to go. They actually had food and water and everything, but the problem was their generator ran out of gas within the first day. And everybody else was doing the same thing. And when they would get to the gas pumps, they would have like you know a two-hour wait, and then hope. Yep. And so yeah, that yeah that uh, leads me into uh, a backup heat system. And I can just kind of give you an over overarching story that happened to me last year, and I can just roll all this together before we go any further. Um, my electricity still works, but for some reason my heater quit working, and it's electric, not propane. It got me beat there, but. What I did, because the electricity still worked, is I had several space heaters, the you know, nice electric ones, not the you know, really crappy ones that are going to start to fire immediately. But uh, I kept a couple of those, and people that's one thing people in preparedness community don't think about is they just assume that power is going to automatically go out every single time. And that's not always the case. Like I said, in my situation, the heater just quit, but the power all still worked. So... I uh, basically put my dogs and cats into one room, and I lived out of one room for a whole weekend. It was a holiday weekend. I couldn't call anybody to come fix it. So I had two space heaters in one bedroom with, you know, just double layer clothing and all the animals in there, and it was pretty comfortable in that one room. And I really didn't have to spend any money as far as we were talking about the generators and fuel and all that. And I still had a way to cook, so we had electricity, so... Uh, we can go back to some other stuff. I'll let you go ahead with whatever you got. Well, no, that just reminded me of uh, this just past summer. I mean, I know it's hot weather stuff, but that actually happened to me. My air conditioning went out right in the middle of about a two-week stretch of 100-degree you know, degree weather. Yeah. And, I mean, you want to talk about miserable. But there again, I still had power, and, you know, a lot of people think, ah, oh, you know, it's not too bad without air conditioning. Well, it is when you're in a basement house and – you know, moisture and stuff like that. But now we were able to just move everything into one room. Well, and you could use a fan, which is the same as how I use the space heater. Yep. Yeah, that's actually exactly what we did. We moved into one room and got a little uh, 
portable air conditioner and set it up in that one room, and we actually live pretty comfortably, really. But as far as other winter stuff for the house, uh, we talked about, you know, like backup heat, food, stuff like that. Just having blankets. And I know for me, I tend to get bored real fast. So if I'm stuck in the house for any length of time, I tend to get really bored and kind of cabin fever a little bit. So I like to also think of, like, entertainment stuff. You know, oh, I love yeah, to that's, read. That's a, that's a definite, yeah. You know, I mean, I love to read and everything, but, you know, I it's hard to, you know, include my wife in reading. And, you know, she's not really a big reader, so we've got, like, just board games and stuff like that. I mean, I know that's kind of silly talking about preparedness stuff, maybe, but well, at the same time, it's, it's... It's like you said earlier, especially if you have kids or dogs right. or something. You know, you have other things to think about other than just being able to sit there comfortably all day. Right. So, you know, I mean, I, I would even go... Like I said, I guess it's kind of goofy to mention that whenever we're talking about everything else. Uh, I don't think so at all. But yeah, I mean, you know, we've got, like I said, we got board games we don't need any power with. We got, you know, cards and stuff like that we can play with and everything. So even if, you know, we lose power or whatever, we've got something to do. And look how little that stuff costs you. You know, that's another thing to think about. You don't need to go out and spend a bunch of money to do this and that. And, you know, the idea is to basically survive the short. Know, a short time period with going to possibly be uncomfortable for you as opposed to living like a king through anything, you know? Right. I mean, obviously, everybody wants to do that, but it's just not realistic financially. And I'll go into one more thing. I got two more things on my list here. Um, lighting. You know, the when we had our power knocked out, you know, you can do okay in the day, especially if the sun's out because it reflects off the snow and ice. Everything's bright. But at night, you're going to need light to, you know, let's say you do have power and you don't have the heat, or your lights don't work, or one second of your house doesn't work. I mean, there's all kinds of these ridiculous scenarios that it can be, but uh, having flashlights, having small LED lamps, candles. One other thing is tarps. You know, we were talking about the ice storm, possibly knocking out windows or doors or anything like that. And think about it. If you get a, if you get your window cashed in, you're not going to have time to repair that extremely quickly. Right. You know, put a tarp over it to at least keep the wind and moisture out of it. And one other thing I just now thought of, um, but going back to my story, I ended up buying a Mr. Heater Buddy. Have you seen those? I've seen them, but I haven't had a chance to try them out or anything. They actually work really well, surprisingly. They just, uh, you guys can Google them. We'll probably do, I'll, I'll probably do a review on one here before too long. But they just take the little propane canisters that you can buy at pretty much any, you know, hardware store or sporting goods store that use propane stoves, which that's another thing you can add. In the canister. But anyway, uh, as long as you keep a window slightly cracked so the carbon dioxide, you know, because it does give off that. Uh, but it does keep you warm, surprisingly, in a small small area. You know, if you close off into one room, it's something you can use for throughout the day, every now and then. So, uh, that's all I got on my list. Anything else you got to add? Uh, well, I was just going to add in with, like, the propane heaters and stuff. We just went and bought uh, a nice little wall-mounted ventless heater. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it was... I don't know, the neighborhood of $300. I mean, it's a little pricey, but, you know, when you're looking at stuff like that, it's not that bad. You don't have to vent it. You know, just put a couple screws in, you know, studs in the wall and just hang it up. It's a lot and, more convenient when you don't have to worry about venting it. Right. And, you know, I they do recommend having a carbon monoxide detector, and that's another big thing that I just actually kind of thought of when I said that. Uh, if you do run gas of any type for heat, like in your home, you really need to get a carbon monoxide detector if you don't have one. Yeah. I I would they, get a separate one because a lot of times they include them, you know, in the smoke. Yeah, room. yeah, but need I, a I separate. I would get a separate one to back that one up. Yeah, definitely need a separate one. They actually recommend them putting them kind of like the uh, like smoke detectors, kind of one in each room. I don't go that extreme with it because I've only got the heater in the one room. And, you know, if anything happened, we would just move into that area and not worry about it. Yeah. But that's another thing. that, And even, you know, just your smoke alarms and stuff like that, make sure, you know, they're working. Because this time of year, a lot of stuff happens, especially if you burn wood. You know, have some back, people... Have backup batteries for all of them. Yep. Yeah, that's another big one, too. So that's all I've got, so... And with that, that pretty much ends the show. Um, we'll talk just about basic, you know, cold weather preparedness. A lot of stuff people take for granted, and then a lot of basic stuff people do have. 
So we might not, everything we talk about, it may fit your need based on your area, it may not. You can, you know, all this stuff is customizable to whatever you need. It's, it's not a one, one size fits all, so to speak. So that's pretty much it. Brent, you got anything else to say before we close out? Just be safe. All right, drive safe on the ice roads. See ya.